it's the ninth year that we've celebrated Halloween on the channel, and with all the scary stuff that we've discussed in the past, what other frightening monsters or topics could we possibly do? That's right, nine years and nine videos. What will we speak about next? You know what almost has nine? Spiders. Well, the viewers have likely read the video's title already, so they know that today's topic is spiders. The creepy arachnids that many people want out of their homes, even though spiders help kill those other nuisance insects. But we're not just talking about any old house spiders, we're looking at giant spiders, since their creep factor and threat factor are enhanced when they're much bigger than us. Plus, giant enemy spiders are used in a lot of horror tropes. And to take it a step further, we'll just be looking at video games, since plenty of games find all sorts of creative ways to make giant spiders attack you, or be your friend. Maybe we'll discuss some friendly giant spiders here too, but they'll mostly be foe. Some of them might not even be official spiders, but we'll bend the rules a bit for the spider-like monstrosities. And joining me are my spooky co-hosts, Negative X. Wanna know why spiders are scary? Because they have eight legs. The more legs, the scarier. Centipedes, super scary. Flies, less scary than spiders because they have six legs. Uh, snakes, zero legs. And that's why everyone loves snakes. And, but I go by Goose from Idiot's Play Games. I'm a man of many names, but I go by Goose. Now, let's crawl through the top 10 giant spiders in video games. Number 10, Queen Goma from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. First, we have to start off with the great Deku Tree, and he's a cool dude in the Zelda world. He has the wisdom on the universe, he keeps the evil away, and his design is just a face on a giant tree. And who doesn't love that design philosophy? What's not cool, though, is hurting this majestic tree, which the parasitic armored arachnid Queen Goma is guilty of. And yes, that's the full title. We have to say it. It sounds ominous. And what are arachnids? Spiders. It's gonna be really embarrassing if I'm wrong about that. Someone will be like, um, actually, one or else are arachnids? Ticks. It's like, yeah, but nobody likes ticks. Next year, top 10 scary ticks. It'll just be the same list. It's just the same video. <laughs> <laughs> Goma crawled inside the tree and cursed him, so the tree called upon the hero Link as the only person who could save him by going inside the tree to manually remove Goma. The Great Deku Tree acts as the first dungeon of the game, meaning Goma is the first boss. Being an introductory boss, Goma is pretty simple, having you use your default weapons to fight her. Her main solo attack is just flopping on top of you, which you can block with your shield, but if she needs assistance, she sends her children at you. She'll just keep popping out eggs, and then they'll come and fight you, and it's really easy to kill them. So, you know, not exactly mother of the year over here. I have to say, it's kind of a recurring theme with spiders. What did she expect them to do? She's such a good mother. To ultimately defeat her, you simply have to stun and slash. And oh gee, I wonder where her incredibly telegraphed weak spot is. Surely firing stuff at this giant eye that's a different color from the rest of her body won't do anything. Regardless, you defeat Goma in the end, and the great death Deku Tree is saved. Wait, why is he saying goodbye? We, we killed Goma. You, you, why are you going? No, don't leave. No. That tree had it coming. He did not. Now get out. Nah, it's okay. You can stay. Number nine, Shelob in the Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers video game. Shelob's got a bit of an unfair advantage in terms of backstory compared to the other spiders on this list for being a part of one of the most famous fantasy franchises ever before she was a video game boss. But even ignoring all of her history, she had a pretty pretty terrifying boss stage in the video game adaptation of The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers movie. While video games based on movies were common in the 90s, I feel like there was a shift in how many of them we saw once we reached that PlayStation 2 era. This game was released in the early 2000s, which was the beginning of that era when any movie with action or even just fantasy got a video game based on it, usually taking the formula from other established games. It was really a mixed bag when this happened. Some were surprisingly great others were expectedly awful, and the bulk were in the middle. But the Lord of the Rings game with the Sheila boss fight for the PlayStation 2 was good enough to create a fond memory. The Two Towers was actually the first game I ever got on the PlayStation 2. I remember Christmas morning, I got a PlayStation 2, and then I got that game, and I spent all day playing it. And my cat spent all day watching the screen too, because we assumed that the graphics were so good that she was just amazed. But looking back, oh man, going back and recording this footage was like, ooh. Your cat was sitting there like, what's this guy looking at? What What is this joker doing? You want to know what else I love about these 
old games, they actually have scenes from the movies. So they're playing part of the movies and then it kind of goes into PS2 graphics when you're supposed to start playing, which is hysterical. It's just, ooh. So in The Return of the King, one of the bosses that you can fight is, of course, Shelob. Shelob being a prominent part of the story. And after she, of course, grabs Frodo, and you're playing a Samwise Gamgee trying to rescue him. But basically in the game, you're fighting through a level trying to rescue Frodo, and you're coming across a lot of spiders. You can scare the spiders off by throwing torches at them and lighting a bunch of little spiders on fire. You can fight the big spiders by stabbing them. And then you finally get to Shelob. And she's fast and kind of difficult because she'll just run around and you gotta like try to hit her and then she'll run up a wall and more spiders will come out and fight you and just back and forth. I mean, listen, it's classic. It's Lord of the Rings. It, she is pro arguably the most famous spider of all time. What about Charlotte? That, you think Charlotte's more famous than Shelob? Get out of here. All Charlotte does is die, I think. I don't remember the story. I know there was a pig in it. You mean Babe Pig in the City? Yeah, that's probably right. And yeah, it's never actually known if she dies. The fight, of course, ends when Samwise Gamgee stabs her in the abdomen or the spider equivalent of an abdomen and she kind of slinks off so she doesn't die immediately and my assumption was that she always lived but I'm not sure if it's confirmed or denied whether Sam managed to kill her or if she's just hanging out angry. See you get a cool boss fight and it's accurate to the movie just as advertised. Really this boss fight might not be the greatest but I'm gonna google most famous spiders ready? Number one Shelob called it. Even though her powers are somewhat standard compared to later spiders on this list they still live up to the iconic name of Shelob. Number eight, the giant spider from Call of Duty. Specifically, this is from Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombie Mode, but all the Call of Duty games kind of blur together at a certain point, so you just gotta know that it's from a Call of Duty game, meaning to defeat it, you gotta shoot this spider, or use grenades, or some other type of heavy artillery. You know, Mr. Top Tenless, this is only the third time we've ever talked about Call of Duty on your channel. This is a Call of Duty channel now. Yes! Well, fine. Maybe I'll just make Top 10 Weapons in Call of Duty Volume 3. Meh. Yeah, got him. While Call of Duty has developed a lot of lore over the years, this spider doesn't have any. It might be related to the main villain of the game, but we didn't really follow the plot line that much. We just know that it's a giant spider who's trying to kill us. You don't need any other motivation to fight back. You just need to survive. The giant spider leads a legion of other less detailed but still deadly giant spiders. Though you can tell that this guy's the leader not only because he's bigger, but because he's got a lot more glowy parts. The one thing that really annoys me about this little boss though, is that he's full of these bright orange things that don't do damage. You can only damage him in his mouth. But, you know, my old school instincts are kicking in and I'm trying to shoot every orange thing on his back. Hey, that's true. But no, stupid spiders only takes damage from his mouth. You gotta get the spider to talk sh before you shoot him. Typical Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to hit him there. He opens his mouth to vomit like every 30 seconds. That's why we're shooting him in the mouth. We're trying to get him to stop vomiting. If only he had some tums to deal with that upset stomach, then he would be invincible. So this guy's kind Kind of tough to get to. You have to unlock one of the special weapons in the game by finding the parts to get to it. And then you gotta shoot through a secret web wall. Well, it's not that secret, but you gotta shoot through a web wall to actually fight this guy. At which point you're trapped in an arena with him. Once you kill the spider, then you actually can go pick up Widow's Wine for behind the machine. And that I believe that's the only place you can get that on this map, which is actually pretty cool because then when a zombie touches you, one of your grenades go off and covers it in webs. Uh, now explain that in terms someone who only plays fighting games would understand. They go boom! when they touch you. Oh, I get it. Number seven, the spiders in Castlevania. It's a Halloween video, so of course we have to talk about Castlevania. However, the spider enemies in the series have gone under the radar. Spiders are a common enemy throughout the games, but they don't seem to be as iconic as some of the other spooky monster enemies. Still, they hold their weight, coming down from the ceiling, shooting some webs, and just being a general nuisance. Though, they have a bit more of a history than just being being a minor enemy, the N64 Castlevania introduced a spider-human hybrid that not only made use of its spider parts to shoot web, but made use of its human half to hold a trident. They would later be added to the handheld Castlevania games, becoming an unsettling surprise if you wandered into their hiding place. They also had a queen who was a boss in the updated N64 game, but as I mentioned in my werewolf video, I haven't played that version of the game, so I'll simply comment that she looks cool. However, a 3D Castlevania game that we have played relevant to this list was Lords of Shadow for the PlayStation 3. While the game was divisive and went against
against the standard 2D plane of the classic games, it did feature an interesting twist on the Castlevania giant spider. While it had a terrifying bite and sticky web to trap you, along with the fact that it was as strong as a spider that's the size of a car, they could turn around and become your ally. He's kind of a really useful random enemy to run into because you can actually ride him and then have him shoot webs across crevasses and then you can walk across those crevasses after you kill him. So he gets a little more credit than just being a generic spider, you know? So he's like the Donkey Kong Country 2 spider where he's like your mount. Yes. Is there a spider in Donkey Kong Country 2? I'll prepare it for the honorable mentions. The spider's like, whoa, this guy's gonna kill me with his fancy spoon. I better help him out if I want to survive. I feel like if you want to get this spider to stop attacking you, you just gotta follow the old rules of defending against a shark attack, where if you punch a shark hard enough in the face when it's coming for you, it'll leave you alone. Only in this case, instead of running away, it becomes your friend. Only sharks. Like if a bear attacks you, and you yeah, you punch don't it in the nose. punch a bear in the nose. It's gonna eat you. I'm just imagining like a bear or giant spiders like got me pinned to the ground, and I just throw a punch and hit it in the face, and it backs off, and I just turned you, and I'm like, thank God it was a shark. <laughs> How would these spiders compare to fighting sharks? They're tough enemies. They killed me repeatedly. You got killed by your own mount. Well, he was my future mount. First, I had to convince him to be my mount through combat. Oh, you just weren't very convincing. I guess not. Number six, the frostbite spiders from Skyrim. These spiders are common enemies in Skyrim. You can encounter them in certain areas, and they always put up a good fight. From afar, they shoot venom that can poison you to damage you over time. And up close, they're just scary. Besides being ugly slash handsome, their mandibles and legs are strong. They look like they can easily overpower our feeble human muscles. Seeing them move their legs to attack when they're on top of someone is frightening, but in the end, I feel like getting attacked by them is mostly the player's fault, since you encounter these spiders from a distance generally, so you have to approach them, making them angry enough to attack you when you get close. Should have just stayed away. Yeah, these also... spiders were a family, and you came in and just killed their ancestral home. Yeah, I mean, honestly, they're generally minding their own business until they see you and they try to murder you. I also like how these guys come in different sizes too, because you can have your miniature spiders or your big spiders. Yeah, you have your babies and your mama. And the spiders give pretty big indicators when you're entering their domain. There is spider webbing everywhere. You have plenty of chances to go back. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the first enemies that you actually fight. Well, isn't there also a bear that's along with them? You ruin the spider's life, and then you have the option to sneak past the bear. So the game's giving you more of a chance to avoid killing the bear than the spider. Disappointing. Comparing these spiders to previous spiders on this list, I also think they don't have a clear leader. I kind of wish there was like a spider you could talk to, like you could find the queen of the spiders in Skyrim or something like that. That would be interesting to find a talking spider. Yeah, you know, you'd find one and be like, hi, my name's Shelob. I ran here from Lord of the Rings. I would ask, where's Charlotte, huh? I would just ask, whoa, how can you talk? Number five, the Duke's dear Freya from Dark Souls 2. Ooh, we got a Dark Souls boss on the list. What's my reason for wanting to fight this monstrosity? Okay, so basically Dark Souls 2 starts with you waking up as a hollow, which is like a creature that has a curse on it. In order to break this curse, you have to go collect four great souls from the like old ones that are around. Duke's dear Freya is one of those old ones. As far as why this spider is so dear, I don't really think it's clearly established. Why we have to kill this specific spider? I don't know. All I know is that you go into that room full of webs and you just tear them apart. Tear apart the webs or the spider? Because I think tearing apart the spider will need something a lot stronger than what can tear apart the webs. Yeah, you're gonna need a big boot. I was thinking stronger than a boot too. You're gonna need a really big boot. So some notable aspects of the spider that are really cool is that it actually has two heads, one on each side of the body. It's kind of a tough boss fight because the only place you can actually hurt the spider is if you're attacking one of those two heads. Everything else does no damage. So because it has two heads, Heads, it's basically twice the spider, which is why it should be at this position on the list. I disagree. I think this doesn't count as a spider at all, because if you have two heads, each head has four legs. That's, That's two cats. I guess spiders do have hair. Cats have hair. I mean, the logic is flawless. I can't argue against it. It's the weirdest looking cat I've ever seen, but that's definitely a cat. Two cats. But there's a lot of animals with four legs and hair. 
wouldn't those all be considered a cat too with that logic? Duke's dear Freya also has an army of other spiders that he summons routinely throughout the game that you have to fight through, making it particularly hard to kill this guy. Now, I'm leery about this army of spiders. Are we sure it's not just an army of cats? Pretty sure if we count the legs. Roll the footage. Let's count them. <laughs> There's eight. Now, the weirdest thing is the first time when you come into Duke dear Freya's room, all of the little spiders are actually crawling into a giant cocoon from which Freya emerges, which is kind of creepy. It's also worth noting that the Duke in their name refers to a character in the game named Duke Seldora, who had a fascination with spiders and was likely the reason the town was overrun with these parasitic spiders, with Freya being the biggest and leader of them. Queen Mama, everyone loves her. Which is why she's at the bottom. That's why she's at the top. Guys, it's number five. <laughs> That's why she's in the middle. Number four, Rom the Vacuous Spider from Bloodborne. We've discussed the story of Bloodborne in previous videos, where you go around hunting monsters, learning how they came to be in this world, and having blood heal all ailments. And that's a very summarized version of the plot. There's a lot more to it. We hear about some giant beasts known as the Great Ones, who have transcended the normal plane of existence to become super beings of sorts. All their thoughts and emotions are unknown, since they tend to just be giant roaring monsters that no one can defeat, so it leaves a lot for us to figure out. One of these Great Ones is Rom the Vacuous Spider, and there's a lot we can figure out just by looking at its full name. We know that she's a spider, her friends call her Rom, and she sure is vacuous. You walk up to her, the very first thought is, what a vacuous thing. Hey, one thing we have in common with this spider is we're vacuous too. I had to look it up just now, and it was like, no thoughts running through that noggin. I was like, oh my god, yes. She's also very magically powerful. When you're fighting her, she's shooting out like meteorites from her tail at you. If you're too far away and you get hit by one of them, it can one-shot you. As you get close, she can start thrashing around with her weird, not spider-like body and just hit you like that. I mean, she doesn't do most of the fighting herself outside of launching these magic attacks. Mainly, it's the rest of the spiders that you have to keep an eye on while doing this boss fight. The because... neat thing about the lesser amygdalas is they look more like spiders than Rom does. Rom looking unspider-like fits with her powers compared to other spiders on this list. Instead of just biting and shooting venom and venom accessories, she goes for ice balls and teleportation, not the normal spider fare. And a big thing she also brings to the fight is the atmosphere. Instead of fighting somewhere dark and dreary, we're in a bright void where we can clearly see every one of her mini spiders and open pores, every detail of them. I don't like her texture, but I'll trade it off for the ambiance of this location. Number three, Heresy from the Evil Within. The Evil Within is a fun survival horror game. It throws a whole bunch of terrifying giant monsters at you that you have to find ways to defeat using your normal human weapons and the environment around you. There's also a mystery element to it regarding why these monsters keep coming. They're linked back to a psychic man named Ruvik who had been experimented on in the past and created all of these monsters in his head. Now thanks to sci-fi powers and his physical body dying, they're all getting unleashed and it's up to our protagonists to stop them. We discussed one of those creatures on our amalgamated monster list being Amalgam Alpha, the beast made of bodies. And if you thought that was horrifying, now it's time to look at this giant spider-like creature that Ruvik releases, who's got the legs of a spider, but the face of your nightmares. So, thing to remember is the giant spider's name is Heresy. He's got a name, like Ruvik looked at this thing and he said, well, I don't know it's a great name for the guy. Heresy. <laughs> That's what he is. Heresy. You mean like Harris C? He's just got a typical first and last name. No, like he's committing heresy. It's almost, maybe he misspelled Hershey's when he was trying to spell it. This is the closest thing to a spider we've had on the list yet. I will, fine, yes, you're saying it's a spider. That's all I need. Except it only has six legs. Except it only has six legs. We're getting closer to that threshold. <laughs> Heresy's main attack is acid. This thing is just leaking everywhere. You're better off contesting against its long legs than trying to get close to it. And that's really its only special solo attack. It leans into being a truck-sized spider for the rest of its damage. But Heresy still gives you the classic spider monster special by throwing some larva at you. That being said, these larva move fast. They're crawling and leaping at an alarming speed where you don't want to let them get any sort of advantage 
advantage, so good on Heresy for knowing that her children actually stand a chance before sending them out. And if Heresy falls behind you as you retreat in a moving truck, it can also speed up with the vehicle, so it makes up for not having many attacks with its hustle. And then he dies, and it's over. Like, he only gets like 15 minutes of screen time, but man, it's a memorable 15 minutes. Plus, it doubles as a chase scene, and it's a good time. You wanna know how he dies? Dumbass runs into an overpass. Well, I guess he jumps on the bus and we run him into an overpass. If Heresy just looked forward, he could have survived. People gotta use that overpass to get to work. Well, I think the overpass wins that fight. I'm not sure the overpass has really slowed down. Number two, Spider Mastermind from Doom. Spider Mastermind is the final boss in various Doom games. We personally missed out on playing the original Doom, where it was the leader of the Hell Army, but Doom 2016 got to reintroduce us to the glory and terror of this spider robot demon. The spider shows us why it's the final resort for hell. It's got the works. It's strong, it's got various lasers, it can quake the ground, and it even has psychic powers. With a brain like that, no doubt telekinesis is on the menu. Thankfully, it leaves its brain exposed, making it easier for us to damage it. Yay, telegraphed weak spots. The plot of Doom 2016 is, well, it's Doom. You have to defeat demons from hell invading Earth, or uh, Mars. But the demons had help from a scientist named Olivia Pierce, who became obsessed with connecting Mars and Hell, and made a deal with the devil for ultimate power in exchange for helping them get to Mars. Though, you could guess how that turns out for her. She gets betrayed, but despite Hell betraying her, Olivia still has a role in the final boss fight against Spider Mastermind. So you spend a lot of the game trying to hunt her down, trying to stop the demons and whatnot, and when you finally get to her at the end of the game, she falls into a puddle of blood and emerges as the Spider Mastermind. Actually, it's less her turning into the Spider Mastermind and more of them combining, so it's like they're now Olivia Mastermind or Spider Pierce, whichever name you prefer. Spiders need eight legs. This guy has like eight wrinkles. I mean, he's got like four legs, which is halfway there, and a really big brain. God damn it, it's a cat. <laughs> this is another cat. Mr. Top Down has got to change the video to top 10 cats. Yeah, I mean, it could just be because the spider is combined with a person, so the legs average out to four. Wait, no, they should average out to five with that logic. Eh, it's got spider in its name, so we know it counts for the list. This boss is also kind of hard to fight because you have to spend a lot of time not being on the ground because she'll like electrify the entire ground in the stadium, jumping from pillar to pillar, which is pretty cool. I like when it rolls. It's a good contrast from all of its shooting attacks. It's having a bit of fun. I just love how much firepower this thing has. I love the giant brain style, and I love the finishing move because you actually come up and I think you put your rocket launcher right inside of its mouth. It's not the best boss in Doom 2016, but it's probably the second best boss. How many bosses are in that game? Probably two. Yes, I can only remember two bosses. Wait, who's your favorite boss then? I just think at the end of the day, the Cyber Demon is such a fun boss fight. Honorable mentions, Squitter the Spider from Donkey Kong Country 2. This is the least scary giant spider on the list. He's so goofy, I love him. On levels where you encounter him, he lets you ride on his back and creates webs as platforms to help you navigate the stage. Yeah, this is the first spider we have on this whole list where it's not trying to kill you, he's trying to help you climb to higher places. I honestly think this is the scariest spider though, because he's wearing shoes, and there's something scary about a spider wearing track shoes. It's like, I'm gonna chase you down, don't even try to run. My theory is that every one of those shoes is from someone that's tried to like, kill him with that shoe. It's his battle trophy. Lucky for him, everyone who murders him buys the same pair of shoes, so stylistically they all are the same. They're all even left foots, you know? Ariados from Pokemon. Ariados is a generic bug poison type that's low tier, but I always liked how it could randomly learn Psychic and Nightshade despite not being able to learn any other Psychic type or Ghost type moves. Not sure why they did this, but it added a layer of mysteriousness. Phantom from Devil May Cry. Well, look at that, another demon spider. The spiders from Minecraft. Well, Minecraft is a video game and spiders are spiders, so it fits for this list. And Armogoma from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. When I announced I was doing this list, this spider was suggested by friend of the channel I Live for Zelda, but I already had the Queen Goma segment recorded by that point, so here's an honorable mention. For number one, we wanted to go with the most unique spider, a spider that feels different from the rest despite being less detailed with its appearance and more simplistic with its actions. It's got a cool artistic vibe going on. Number one, Spider from Limbo. Limbo is a 2D puzzle platformer where everything you're playing as and against is shown in silhouette. You have to 
identify all obstacles and potential weapons by shape alone, so the design of everything in this game is key. You're playing as this guy trying to find his sister in this world that's constantly trying to kill you, and one of those things trying to kill you is a giant spider. Part of the fear involving this spider is how quickly it moves. When you first encounter it, its legs are slowly moving as it sits in place. You think you have time to react, but one motion by you and its sharp leg comes crashing down on top of you for an instant kill. The shock of how swiftly it strikes all of a sudden throws you for a loop the first time this happens, but you can trick it with this inconspicuous bear trap you can find. But if you can't figure out how to get past this spider initially, too bad, it won't budge. Man, this is fun. I love standing in the path here. She has weird hobbies. To be fair, what do you think this spider would say about our hobby, which currently involves talking about murderous fictional spiders? What's the weird hobby? Blocking the path of children? Or talking about the person blocking the path of children? Once you get past it initially, you're not safe, because the spider starts chasing you. For the most part, when it reaches you, it'll just stab you with its giant leg. That's its main kill move, but it's effective, so why should it try anything else? I mean, eventually the spider does wrap you in some, like, silk and whatnot, too, that you have to escape. You know, so it does basic spider stuff. She gives you some silk so you can make, like, a nice shirt out of? So she's very generous. She gives you that gift before That's she's why she you. tosses you to the side, because you're very ungrateful. When it wraps you in silk, it's both tense and anticlimactic, since it's the only time it doesn't try to immediately kill. Instead of stabbing, it gently picks you up and observes you for a second. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap, it's gonna eat me, isn't it? But it calmly wraps you in silk to save you for later. You can still escape, though, so I'm like, huh. I'm okay with this. After that, though, the chase is on. Now the only way to defeat this spider is to outsmart it. You're constantly jumping over cliffs, so you have to find a jump that you can make that this spider can't, or use gravity to your advantage by finding a heavy rock to roll down the hill that the spider is chasing you on. Or better yet, both, because this spider comes back no matter the fall, so you have to outsmart it a few times. I do feel kind of bad for the spider at the end, because you actually defeat him by, like, rolling a bowl boulder down onto the spider, which like knocks off all of its legs, like in the end, well, you have to chop off multiple of its legs to solve the puzzles as you go on. And eventually you just have this spider with one leg on that's injured and you like pull the leg off and then you kind of push the spider into a gap so you can traverse the gap. Yeah, it's just a rough way to go. So this spider is more of a bridge is what you're saying. <laughs> this spider becomes a bridge. <laughs> Just so you know, all spiders are just eight legs away from becoming bridges. I did have a 180 in emotion when I saw the spider weakly crawling with its one leg. I felt maybe we could have talked over differences in hindsight, but it did try to kill us first, so the spider started it. And shoutouts to those enemy kids with the fake spider. It's a cool meta joke about the game's aesthetic, but dude, could you not try to trick us right now? We just had an upsetting encounter with a spider that we're trying to forget. So for its hot pursuit of us, in this cold world, Spider from Limbo climbs to the top of this list. Oh! Oh god! Oh god! <laughs> Loser! <laughs> Thought you could get me, didn't you? Now, what did you think? Were all these video game spiders giant and deadly enough for your liking, or were there some that should have gotten the boot? And what are some of your favorite giant video game spiders overall, whether we discussed them or not? Let us know in the comments! Anyway, thank you all for watching, happy Halloween, and we will see you in the next video!